while again another shot rings out and yet another man falls to the ground. A murmur spreads among the hiding Russians. Belaya Smirt, the White Death. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're gonna be checking out something that we've checked out previously. And this is going to be about Simo. I, I messed this up last time, but you guys are trying to tell me how to pronounce it and I still couldn't figure it out. But I think it's Simo Hauha, but I don't know. Please feel free to try and correct it. I know you guys are being pretty like considerate and like giving me examples of like English words that it might sound a little bit closer to, but yeah, it didn't really work out. So I apologize, but we're gonna be revisiting him. This video is from a YouTube channel called Yarn Hub, which does a lot of like really sick animated stuff, more specifically tailored to like history stuff. So this is a really cool video and I think it'll do a little bit better justice than the last video we checked out. Now, real quick, you guys might see my eye is a little bit jacked up. And that's because my dog decided to whip her, her like little rope toy right into my eye and give me a corneal abrasion. So that was pretty cool. So if you guys think I have like pink eye or something going on, that's what it was. Doesn't feel too good, especially with the lights on right now, but I gotta produce some content and this video seems like a good place to start. So let's do it. <laughs> it's winter 1939. Almost night, as the crimson horizon spreads across the wild you guys can see the animation forest, looks a column of Soviet soldiers marches across a frozen landscape. Really this impressive. is the Winter War, Stalin's invasion of Finland. Talvisota, as the Finns call it. Mm -hmm. As the column makes progress, there's a flash that comes out of nowhere and a man goes down. The Russian soldiers freeze. <laughs> They're so unbothered by it. Yeah, it didn't really seem like they liked this guy too much because they're completely unfazed. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the Winter War, pretty much just what I've seen on like YouTube videos and whatnot, but I know the term Talvi Sota and I, I know like the general timelines and how it sort of ended up and, and whatnot, and then the continuation war. But I don't know a whole lot about like how the Russians felt about actually going into this because, yeah, you can, in this animation, it might not be totally accurate where, you know, they're taking fire and they're kind of just like undisciplined and sort of demoralized so i don't know if they were like super motivated to go into that sort of conflict so hopefully this video does a good job of maybe building off of that or at least giving some background as to how the soviets felt about it or at least going into it Freeze. cry of sniper fire get down is shouted <laughs> why is your Russian rifle slung on your back homie scramble for cover while again another shot rings out and yet another man falls to the ground. That'll happen. A murmur spreads among the hiding Russians. Belaya Smirt, the White Death. Mm, All alone snap. in the distance, a man clad head to toe in a snow white coat, hidden from view by the wild landscape and snow pushed up all around him. That would be really balances scary. his rifle on his gloves and patiently waits for another unfortunate soul to enter his sights. <laughs> the animation but who sick. is this man that strikes dread into the heart of every Russian soldier in Finland? Born and raised in the rugged woods of Karelia in southern Finland, Simo Hauha, from the start a natural hunter <laughs> and sharpshooter. Okay. How what is he doing right now? I mean, I don't know if hunters generally go around running with a rifle slung on their back, doing like some obstacle course thing going on. So the animation might not help with everything, but you can really get a good appreciation for like what the landscape looked like, how like scary it must have been, especially camouflaging in the snow. I feel like that'd be pretty easy as long as you're not like leaving footprints everywhere or like melting the snow or, you know, having all your, your cold breath going through the air. I feel like it's pretty easy to camouflage in the snow and it'd be pretty terrifying if you have to move around in that sort of environment and all of a sudden you start taking fire, especially when the trees have snow on them. It kind of just becomes like really whitewashed, especially if it's sunny. So must be pretty scary going to that, but hopefully we're going to get a little bit of background about Simo Hauha, Hauha here. Hauha <laughs> recalled his experience growing up as a farmer, hunter, and skier as a vital part of his skill of being the excellent sniper that he became. Having been in the Finnish Civil Guard and Finnish it's Army from animal. the age of 17, he cultivated his skill as a marksman and won shooting contest after contest. Hmm. His house was reportedly full of trophies for marksmanship. That's cool. With the outbreak of war, Simo is deployed as part of a garrison manning the defensive lines on the Finnish-Russian border. He was ready In then. the early days of the war, Simo's commanding officer notices Haoha's skill with a rifle <laughs> and assigns him to work independently as a sniper. I kind of like that, that little touch. I know from what I've heard, Simo didn't really like utilizing scopes. He liked using the IR sight so he can get like a lower profile or something. So that's kind of funny that they sort of added that in there and didn't really talk about it. 
Hao Ha's first action as a sniper was ironically a counter-sniping mission. Simo describes the mission such. It happened once that my CO tried to kill an enemy sniper with his scoped rifle. This Russian had taken up position about 400 meters from us and was constantly shooting towards our lines. After a while, he sent for me and showed me approximately where he thought the enemy sniper position to be. One of our lieutenants was with us, acting as a spotter when the duel began. At first, I did not see a trace of him, just a small rock where he was supposed to be. But after careful investigation, we spotted him behind a little hump of snow near that rock. <laughs> well, he I messed took up. careful aim with my trusty M2830, and the very first shot hit the intended target. Dang. The That's Soviet another kind of thing I wouldn't really consider like, I feel like if I were in a snow environment, I would generally think like the snow is like really safe. But in reality, if it's not packed in certain areas, it's not going to provide you with a whole lot of cover. So it's kind of like a false sense of security sometimes. It's definitely good concealment for sure. But as far as cover, not so much. I do like how they're showing like a little bit of the background as far as some of his battles or like how he sort of got his, his, I guess, fame, if you want to call it that. He probably wouldn't want to call it that. But as far as him getting his reputation, it's kind of cool how they're sort of giving the background for that because I don't think we saw that too much in the other video besides just like his general skill with like shooting and, and being a farmer and being a hunter and whatnot. Fear of Simo grew to the point that they were willing to call in artillery to shell the areas where they believed him to be. <laughs> That's a lot of guns in, fact, in one Simo spot. Confirmed, the Russians put a lot of effort into trying to kill me. After finishing yet another Soviet sniper, they vigorously started shelling Simo's foxhole. 50 wow. shells landed around my foxhole, but in vain, Simo wants to describe. Their snipers must be valuable for all to their them. efforts, the Soviets never scored more than a scratch or at best, a ripped coat on Hao Ha. Simo Hao Ha's hmm. tactics as a sniper are unprecedented for the time. Unlike his Soviet counterparts, Simo doesn't use scoped sights, preferring iron sights hmm. as scopes risk giving off a glare that okay. exposed the sniper's location. Yeah, that's it. That he makes said a lot that he of sense. caught many a careless Russian sniper due to the glare of their scopes. The cold doesn't bother him I feel like either, you kind of hear that a few different times. I know when you're talking about Carlos Hathcock when he was in Vietnam, like you would be able to tell someone's location just based off of the glint of their sniper scopes. I know nowadays you can get like anti-glare devices on your, on your optics and whatnot, but back then they probably didn't have anything like that. And I'm not sure if their optics were even that's clear or that well equipped to take something like that. But yeah, I mean, if he's fine without the optic and he can be successful without it, then I'm sure it wasn't really an issue for him. With many layers of thick winter clothing, on a cold December day, Simo wanders into the wild and heads to one of his favorite spots, a snow-covered tree with low-hanging <laughs> branches that spot. creates the perfect spot overlooking a valley. With snow in his mouth, his breath doesn't give away his position. Yep. Hao Ha pushes up the snow around him, constructing a makeshift barrier, and with a daily ration supply, he sits and waits for hours. He waits, <laughs> hours waits in the snow. and patiently waits like any good hunter until his patience is rewarded when a group of four Soviet soldiers march into the iron sights of his rifle. Just four, huh? That's pretty small unit to be moving around like Simo that. Simo fires and reloads rapidly after each shot. After four shots, four men lay in the snow, never to rise. Good grief. Simo goes on to fire his rifle twice. If you guys know any specific books or even like any movies dedicated to Simo How Ha, then definitely put it down in the comment section because I'd like to know like the whole backstory because I hear like stories here and there. I think he actually did an autobiography. And if that's true, please tell me the name of that down in the comment section so I can try and find it online, like a digital copy or maybe just buy it on Amazon or something. So if you guys can do that, I would appreciate it because I'd like to get a little bit more of like the backstory and take it from his perspective because you kind of just hear a lot of stories and it's kind of hard to put like a date to it or like even the effectiveness or what it actually meant for him to take down like four guys because I don't know it kind of just seemed like he's doing some lone wolf stuff just in the woods taking out random people which I mean might have been the case to be honest. 25 times that day setting a record for the most kills achieved by a sniper in one day increasing the ever-growing legend of, of Simo Hauha as the white death in the Soviet ranks. Hmm. I wonder how he compared to Vasily Zyk Zyksev. Simo Halha, as an invisible sniper and his legacy as the fear of his foes, a hero at home, became even more dreaded by not just Soviet soldiers, 
but also the Soviet high command, who put mm. a bounty on his head. There were Soviet snipers who wanted the bounty, going to the hot spots and waiting in ambush for Simo. One set up his position and waited for hours. <laughs> like, As night fell, this. the sniper thought that Simo <laughs> must have left and stood to head back to base. There's a crack, but the Russian never hears it and falls Whoa. in the snow. Rocky move. By the end of January 1940, Simo would achieve 200 career kills. And for this, Simo was awarded by the Finnish government a custom rifle designed for him, although he would continue hmm. to use his ever-trusted M2830 <laughs> He's like, I don't want it. Simo What's continues so to rack up kills it? throughout the war and achieves the remarkable feat of over 500 sniper kills in 100 days. That's in early insane. March, he leads a squad of fellow Finns against a superior attacking Red Army force, attempting to penetrate through the forest. Of the battle, Simo recalled, I was in the dark forests of Ulisma. We were given a mission to counterattack one of many. We moved to our starting positions at early dawn. There was a swamp, some 300 meters wide, which we crossed without difficulty. Once I didn't even consider like a swamp in an, in an Arctic environment or like a snow covered environment. Is that pretty common in Finland? Cause that's not even something that I would even think to exist to be honest. But so something that I've seen with a lot of these videos is they don't talk about the kills that he got with his submachine gun. Cause I hear he was pretty effective with his submachine gun. So. I don't know, a lot of videos sort of skim over that, and I think it's pretty cool for him to go from like the long range sort of stuff to going into like stuff with a submachine gun, like the really close quarters stuff. So him being able to be successful with both of those kind of just goes to show that he's he's a, an all around good war fighter and a good soldier. Over the swamp, we charged against the enemy that was really close to us. My rifle functioned very well. We were so close to the enemy that even some were only two meters away from me. The enemy was forced to withdraw, but some very brave individual soldiers <laughs> right. remained behind to cause havoc amongst us. Suddenly there was a shot, maybe only 50 to 100 meters away, and I felt hit. There's a whoosh, and Simo gets tunnel vision, and then everything goes white for the white death, and he falls, hit like to hear that from by his an exploding bullet. After the battle, the Finnish soldiers find what they think is Simo's remains and place him in a pile with the other fallen. Then, one of the Finns notices a leg twitching amongst the pile. Oh my Incredibly, gosh. Simo was alive, but half his face was gone. He's in a coma for three days, by which time the Winter War is over. Simo had 26 surgeries to repair his shattered jaw, Golly. which was crafted from a piece of bone taken from his hip. After recovering, he would peacefully live the rest of his days at his new farm in the scenic Finnish countryside. Wow. Passing away. Whoa, okay, he lived really, really long. That's awesome. And that looks like a really solid gravestone too. Good stuff. In 2002, at the ripe old age of 96, Simo Dang. left a legacy as the world's greatest sniper and marksman, while a renowned finished hero, the stuff of legend. When asked about his services in the war, Simo said, I didn't feel anything towards the enemy. I just fired and loaded and continued <laughs> as long as there were enemies. I just shot every time I saw one. I didn't care if he was a commander or not. I'm a lucky man. I've never had dreams about the war. I've always slept well during the war too. <laughs> I did what I was told to do as well as I could. He's born to do that. Asked stuff. how he became such a good shot, he simply said, practice. Mind if blowing you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and please watch more videos of ours. Okay, I definitely want to check out more videos from this channel. So if you guys have any recommendations, please put them down below because Again, I can sort of appreciate a, a little bit better when you have like an animation, especially like a good 3D one like this, because you can really sort of get better engrossed and sort of like, again, the environment and get like a better feeling for what he might have been going through. But like hearing it from his perspective would be nice. So if like a video was like this and they added quotes from his autobiography, that would be really, really cool. But yeah. This video, I think, did a little bit of a better job. The last one I checked out was also an animation, but it was kind of like the art style was weird, and at the same time, they got a lot of information incorrect from what I understand. So again, if there's anything that was incorrect in this video or anything that I might have said that was incorrect, especially with how I pronounce it, please put that down below because I'm always willing 
to learn and sort of correct anything that might be a little bit of fake news in my video. Now, as far as video recommendations, I do still have my list going. So if you guys have any recommendations, you can send them my way. I usually get them from the comments, sometimes on Instagram, even my, my Discord, I get a lot of them. So if you guys wanna check out any of that stuff, I have links in the video description for my Discord, my Patreon, if you wanna see some like behind the scenes stuff or gun stuff. I have my shorts channel, which is pretty much where I put my shorts and you know my gun stuff whenever I go and do that. But October is coming up, so I do wanna do some special stuff for that, so I think it'll be fun. Try and just dress up in some costumes because that's always fun. And again, I just, I love Halloween, so it kinda just gives me an excuse to, to dress up and do videos like that. So I plan on doing that, so stay tuned for that. So if you guys have any Halloween focused videos, you can throw those down below as well in preparation. But thank you guys for watching. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.